Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Soren Random, and today I'm going to be showing you guys the start of a new series. A series that I'm going to call the Weapon Spotlight. In this series, I'm going to go in-depth on every single weapon that I'm able to find, and I'm going to show you guys where it's located, I'm going to talk about its stats, I'm going to show off the skill, if it has a unique skill, or if it doesn't, I'm going to show off whatever it comes with, and then I'm going to use it to slaughter this poor camp of soldiers so that you guys can see some gameplay of it. So today's video is going to be about the Crystal Sword. It's actually one of my favorite weapons in the game. I can't actually show off it, its base stuff too much because I have actually leveled it up a bit because I've been using it. But I will show you guys uh, where it's at, talk about some of the stats that it has, and show you guys how I like to use it. So uh, let's get into it. The Crystal Sword is located in the village of the Albanurix, and if you don't know where that is, it is just over here by this lake. It is actually underneath this cliffside right here, um, and the fastest way to get to it is any of these. If you have Folly on the Lake, if you have Oil Punch Jack or Scenic Isle, um, those are the ways that, uh, those are the fastest spawn points, and uh, I'm just going to give myself some markers right here, so I know how to get there, and let's go. Here I am in Leonie of the Lakes at the Folly uh, Grace site, and I am going to be heading to the sword. It is just going to be in this direction right here. Let me if I can follow all my checkpoints. Mm -hmm. Kind of just going to go around the side of this uh, this lakeside. So that was one. Now let's hit two. My uh, my my friend who plays this game thought the way I use checkpoints was really weird, but this is just I don't know. This is just if I have somewhere to go, I've always just put like a couple of them leading in that direction. I kind of just look at the elevation of the map and just kind of follow like where I think the checkpoints would go. But yeah, it's gonna be right over here, and there's gonna be a uh, almost like a large cave, pretty much, and you're gonna go underneath it, and it's gonna be over here on the right. I won't cut this so you guys can see the exact pathing I take if you like are having trouble finding it. But um, as long as you know where this lake is and you have one of those like easy uh, um, gray sites next to it, it should it really shouldn't be that hard to get here. And there, I mean, there's like a couple stuff you gotta avoid, but on torrent it's really no problem. So yeah, you're gonna come up here and there's going to be this up here to your right that you can see it kind of rises up here on this land and it is kind of dark so I'm gonna put my lantern on so you guys can see a little bit better if you have if you don't have the lantern I think it's pretty neat uh, it's I mean the torch I mean it kind of just works the same if you put a torch in your offhand but I just like putting the lantern on my waist just kind of lights up some of the area around me it's gonna be right up here and actually to your right across the bridge and across this bridge it is going to again be on your right on the watch out for her she'll try to snipe you off the bridge as you come across it's going to be this body right here and of course i already have it in my hand so i can't pick it up for you guys but it is that body right there right there on that edge and let's get to talking about some of its stats okay guys so we're back over at the gr at the <sighs> fuck okay guys so we're back over at the uh gate front grace point and i'm going to show you guys its stats and again i can't really show off the base stats because i do have this thing at plus five currently but i can talk about some of its uh its scaling and what you need to uh what you need to to equip it so what's really interesting about the crystal sword is that it's it is a sword that scales off of intelligence which is super super interesting because if you are doing any kind of magic dexterity kind of build and you still want to use something to like have a decently strong melee attack um, it actually does scale with a D off of intelligence which is which is super uh, helpful uh, when you have such a high intelligence stat it just, just kind of just gives it that little boost it does have a weight of 4.5 which if you look at the other swords and like other like straight swords because it's considered a straight sword it does way uh, just a little bit more than most other swords you can even see there's like a 2.5 sword whereas uh, the crystal sword is a 4.5 so that can come in i know the weight load uh gets real like i know a lot of us are trying to like min max that and just get the exact pieces of armor and stuff that we can get so that we're not hitting that heavy load and it does weigh a little bit more so um, if you're like one point off the heavy load it is really unfortunate but it doesn't really come into play that much i don't think you do need a strength of 13 a intelligence of 15 and a dexterity of 10 which is you know a wide range of stats to have but it's really it's really not too hard to hit those especially if you're running uh some of the stuff that boosts your attributes like radagon's uh scar seal or um one of the runes you get from killing a boss which i won't spoil but yeah it has your standard uh five five swing 
a light combo with, it finishes with that downward slash a lot of them do that and it, it does have a uh, kind of unique uh, R2 I think where it pierces and then slashes upwards I think I used like one other straight sword and it did not have this so there might be others but as far as I know it's the first one I've seen with this uh, it's just a pierce and a stab and then its skill is the uh, it does a little, yeah the spinning slash it does a little spin and it just does that but you can press it again and it'll do a little double spin it's not fantastic but it does look cool so one thing that's really interesting about it uh, is that it actually it actually uses physical and magic damage. I don't know if you guys uh, saw that whenever I was showing the stats just a bit earlier, but I came back to, to remind you guys of that. Um, it does physical and magic damage, and again, these are not the base stats. Uh, it is I, I do have this thing currently plus five, so those are not the base stats. But it does do, uh, you will see if I can get some hits off on this guy. Mm, you'll see the little blue... Oh, I just one shot him. The little blue slash, uh, the little blue sparkles that pop up, that is the magic damage going through. It can, it can really get around some enemies that are like, oh, I have high physical uh, defense, or oh, I have high magic defense. Well, it does both. So it, you can see it's not really a small amount either. It's 182 physical and 117 magic. So it does a decent amount of both, which is, you know, utility-wise, is pretty nice. So let me read you guys its description, and let's get into kind of the lore on the sword. So... This is a sword fashioned from pure crystal, which is a deed impossible for a human. Enwreathed with powerful magic, its attack scales with intelligence. The inscrutable crystallians have but one clear purpose, to safeguard their crystals unto the end. One theory posits that they yearn for the return of their creator, who will carve for them new brethren. So it says that the sword cannot could, could never have been crafted by a human, which is really interesting. I think in the area that you find, the village of the Albanerix, it seems like it's kind of been torn down by maybe rot or disease. And the guy you find hanging off the cliff, I believe, has a crown on his head uh, or on his skull. It really makes me wonder, you know, who, like, where did, where, just where did this sword come from? You know, who crafted it, who made it, and how did it get to that village? And who was that guy on the edge of the rock? Super interesting sword, super cool looking sword. It really is, so far, it, one of my favorite weapons in the game. And it's why I decided to make it the start of this series, because it just really intrigues me. And I'm really excited to find out more about it um, as we learn more about the areas and the lore and the map, which I have been watching so many videos about. I will leave you guys with uh, me slaughtering this camp if you just want to see the, uh, the sword in action. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.